Hello and welcome to a summary of the week's Star Citizen news for the week ending the 25th of April 2021. Star Citizen Alpha 3.13 is now live with various new content to try, including new missions for cargo and caves, a huge host of improvements, the reputation system, loads of minor additions too. However, there is still quite a bit more to come with the 3.13 patch cycle, and we're waiting on the Hercules Starlifter, the tank, and station to ship docking, as well as uh, other things too. A part of 3.13's release has some sales on as well. So the Cyclone MT, the Rock DS, the new dual seat rock, which I think is terrible, but I'm sure some people will like. Uh, the Mercury Star Runner and Nomad um, are also on sale, as well as ship paints for all of those, or at least some of those. Um, buy them if you're interested. The Mercury Star Runner and Nomad are now purchasable in game though, and the Rock DS and Cyclone MT will be purchasable probably next major patch. There is also a Aurora ES referral bonus promo on at the moment. Recruit someone to the game that spends at least $40 by the 10th of May and you both get an Aurora ES. Inside Star Citizen this week looked at the work that the gameplay area focused Turbulent Studio are working on towards their goal of building whole star systems in the future. Currently, they're working on hospitals, habs, rooftop gameplay, and more, things that are more tangible in the short term. We had a sprint report that looked at VFX work on thrusters to make them more visible at a distance, plants for areas like Pyro, the colonial outposts and habs there, work towards making the Sabre Gold standard, the Hercules Starlifter with new storage on board, and A2 cluster bombs for that as well, as well as the Redeemer, which is currently looking pretty cool. We had a roadmap update that added various features to the progress tracker, AI behaviour for sleep and hygiene, so bathroom visits, the Boreal Stalker, otherwise known as the Microtech Yeti, an updated third-person camera, the Nick Systems features all got bundled in together with some expectations there that it might be ready, that system, in the not-too-distant future. Some ships have been removed from the roadmap while they work out where they're going to go, um, so this is the F. 7A Mark 1 and 2 Hornet, the F8 Lightning, as well as the Polaris. However, we should hear more on exactly where they're going to be soon. It's not necessarily that they're going to be pushed back a huge amount. They might just be working out exactly where they're, they're going, but it's possible that they have been delayed. We don't know yet. There's an option screen rework that's also been affected in the same way. The Star Citizen Live this week was from FPS Map Design and a game dev episode where they um, built uh, some interesting looking FPS type area. Basically they uh, grabbed um, something that would be interesting to explore and um, look around as well as uh, had a balance for gameplay. So they experimented with building a cave system and an underground bunker and sort of um, clipping these together. These are built in a modular fashion and they are able to add um, sort of systems and new parts to them easily as they update their tool set and assets without having to remake everything, which is great to hear. Doors, elevators and additional rooms can be easily bolted on, but they basically um, got a sort of underground bunker, messed around with it a bit, they can build these out very, very quickly, and then got some cave parts. Now, cave parts are a bit more complex to connect to other terrain. They might need some additional blending, but the tool set already supports that, and they can just clip all this sort of stuff together, and then they'd go through some passes, and it would be able to make an FPS zone in the future. So we got to see a very, very quick turnaround of something rough for that. The newsletter teaser this week is of the Constellation Taurus that's planned for the Alpha 3.14 end of June patch. Very much looking forward to that. I think that's been a bit of a dark horse. A lot of people have wanted that variant for many years now. And that's really it for this week's news. But I'm interested to know what you think. Have you been playing Alpha 3.13? What do you think of the gameplay content there? Is it a little bit too light for you? Have you had a um, great performance sort of boost with it? Is it super buggy? Are you um, constantly crashing? Whatever your thoughts, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. Do you have questionable taste in anime? Do you not want internet pirates looting your internet search history? Do you want a way to have more accessibility to the internets from more countries? Or is your security and privacy important to you? Well, get NordVPN! I shill for them and you should use the code BOARDGAMER or the links below for a discount! Try it out! It's like a fleet of escort ships making sure your internet experience doesn't get griefed.
We have the April ship giveaway as well for a Mercury Star Runner. The ship is extremely multi-role and should be part of any budding citizen's fleet. All you need to do to be in for a chance of winning one is comment on any of my videos made during the month. A random commenter will take that prize. These giveaways and the wider channel content are made possible by people that go the extra mile by becoming a Patreon or a YouTube channel member with that join button in the links below. And me and Zin, the editor for the channel, are now trying to put out regular exclusive content content as a thank you. We'll also be asking you in those videos to help shape the channel with uh, making decisions about what content we do and how we do it. Please consider joining if you're really enjoying the content. It really does help. Take care guys. Thanks for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe for more Star Citizen content and I'll see you in the verse.